Beloved, I want to tell you about an experience that I had when I woke up today at 3 in the morning. Well, it was before 3 because it was there like 3 hours and when it finished, it was around 4 in the morning. Something woke me up. I couldn't sleep. Many thoughts began to come to my mind and at that moment, I turned and turned. I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't. Then this began to speak to my mind and to tell me that he was returning that the Lord was returning and that his people, his people were not prepared, that he had already begun to pour out the Holy Spirit on many people, including some of them he gave me by name, and that those who are at this, who at this moment were not feeling the voice of God, who was speaking to them through those people who know this wonderful message of the word of God, because these people were lagging behind, they were not receiving the latter rain. For me, it was very sad, brothers, because I felt at that moment that the Lord was telling me so many things. I felt, I felt ashamed. I felt very sad because he kept repeating to me, you have to tell people that not, not only look at the Ten Commandments so as to know them by heart and recite them and say, well, I know them. If not, that they live them. It is to live them. What is needed is to live them so that I can dwell in them. I said, Lord, but help me. I don't understand why you are telling me all this. I don't understand why, why you have to say these things to me because even though I know I am not perfect, I don't know how to tell other people. I have been thinking all morning how to put this recording and it has been very strong dealing with the voice that said to me, you have to do it, you have to do it. So fulfilling the command of God because I am in this hour putting this. The Lord tells the ladies who know how to dress, to dress, to dress honestly, honorably, to glorify Him with the dress. That sometimes we also worry a lot about what we're going to put on and inside we're rotten. And that He sees us as we are. He sees our intentions. He sees what is in our thinking. He knows why we do things and why we don't do them. He's analyzing everything because he is coming. Many times he repeated to me, I am one minute away, one minute away from taking off my priestly robes and putting on the robes of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He told me, there are many people who when they are going to have a case, a legal situation, they go and put and pay a lawyer I am free. I am offering myself free as a guarantee of them and they are not looking for me. And I am one minute to get up, a minute to put on my clothes of King of Kings and Lord of Lords and there will be no, no time. Please tell them that the movies they are watching, that they know within them that they do not honor me, the foods they are eating, the thoughts they are having, the actions, all these things. It is not that I am behind them with the finger to accuse them, but that it is distancing them from me. I cannot do anything for them if they do not pour themselves to me and ask for forgiveness so that I can put the word forgiven next to them so that they can be saved. We are already making preparations. Heaven is preparing. That is why you are seeing the martyrdom that is not just beginning, but it's almost culminating. So please tell them to get ready. Tell them that the Saturdays are holy days, holy in every sense. They must make preparations not to be cooking on Saturdays, not to be ironing on Saturdays, not to be doing anything that dishonors me, but to be in communion with me for 24 hours because I want to speak to my people. But my people do not listen to me. They are so puffed up in what they know. Some think they are better than others and all these things are taking them away from me. And I am already giving off my droplets of the Holy Spirit and many are being left behind. They are not receiving it because they are not in their lives arranged with me. Brothers, it was three hours that I was in agony and even now I cannot stay without being decomposed because listening to all these things from the Lord, knowing that the one who can save us, knowing that the one who can do something for us, we ourselves, we are interrupting his work. 
it was so agonizing. There is no one. There is no one in heaven. There is no one on earth who can help us if we do not stand before the Lord and ask for his forgiveness and make amends for our lives. I urge everyone, both those I know personally and those I know through the phone or in the chat, to please arrange your life before the Lord. Each one of us knows what we have to do. God is clear. If we get lost, we will lose ourselves because of our own fault, because he's doing everything, everything possible. He's letting us see the apostasy that exists within the churches from the leaders to the parishioners. He's letting us see through the internet the things that are happening. And he told me it does not matter the evidence that is in front. The one who does not want to see does not want to see. And I can't do nothing. I can't do. I cannot do anything. And I'm coming. I'm coming. You have to tell them. He told me, if you knew that someone was going to get on a boat and that boat was going to sink, you would tell them not to get on it. With that same urgency, you have to tell my people to prepare because the trial begins with them and I am about to end. I am about, about to end with them. Oh, brothers, if we know that we have to move to the field, let's go. Look, even sell what you have. God always gives us something that maybe has something of value and put it on the altar of the Lord and tell him, Lord, look, this is what I have. Help me out. I want to do your will. But please, if we know that within our possibilities, there is something we can do, let's do it because it is very sad. When I was receiving all that, the all this that he was telling me, he said to me, my people know what they have to do, but they are not doing it. And I began to hear people's voices screaming. And I said, what is that? Could it be that I am going crazy? And he told me, no, this is the anguish. And it is not Jacob's anguish. It is the anguish that they knew what they had to do and didn't do it. And now that they look lost, they're screaming. But I no longer can do anything. I heard a voice moan like it wanted to help them but couldn't anymore. Brothers, time is very short. Let's not say it can't be done because if we see by our own, own strength, we can't do anything. Let us stick with the Lord. The Lord can do everything, 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 everything for us. Let's place ourselves wherever we are. Let's do what he wants us to do because what he wants is to save us. In those three hours, so many things were dictated to me. What was I am tell but what I am telling you is the general things that he told me to tell all the people to spread a word and say that he is already a minute, a minute to take off the clothes of intercession and put on the clothes of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He comes to do our work, which is why the prophet declared that it was a strange work. He told me, I don't like to do this, but I have to do it. I have to put an end to sin. And wherever sin is, my consuming fire is going to arrive. And there are many, there are many, there are many who are halfway there. Others who are beginning. Many who believe that they are right, but are wrong. And all, all must go out and cry before me, before the Father to ask for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit is working with them, but they do not want they don't want they do not want to they do not want to pay attention they feel comfortable in life many of them believe that i am delaying but they are not looking at heaven they are not looking at the earth they are not looking at the events they are not reading my word they are not getting into it as they have to and the enemy is entangling them he is entertaining them with work with house with luxury with debt However, my real people, my real people are preparing, but they are very few, very few. And a voice moaned when saying that they are very few. Brothers, in those three hours, I felt that I could hardly breathe. I felt that I was going to die. I felt that I was dying. I was, it, 
I was not going to survive what I was living at that time. Because in the presence of the Lord is something terrible and even more so when we are not worthy. But in His love, in His blessed love, He continues to call us that our heart may be tender and our minds understand that we need Him like the air we breathe. Because if not, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter what we know. It doesn't matter what we preach. It doesn't matter what we do. If we are not right with Him, He will tell us, Depart from me, evildoers. Oh, beloved, I exhort you in this hour with pain in my heart. Let us do the will of God. Because if we do not do the will of God, it does not matter. The honors do not matter. It does not matter the fame. It does not matter what we have in this world. We're going to get lost. Let us be quick to forgive. Let us be quick to help. Let us be quick to give to one another. Because that is reflecting the character of God, of our God. The Lord bless you. And please, let's read God's law, not to know it, but so that with the help of Christ Jesus, because by ourselves we cannot, we can, we can make it alive in our lives and that we can be accepted in Christ Jesus because He is returning, He is returning and is more close to what we imagine and what we think humanly. Sometimes we are in this world at work and we think that this is a long way, but it is passing, brothers. And the saddest thing is that if we do not prepare, beloved, we are going to en not, we are not going to enjoy the heavenly homeland that is eternally, and we are not going to keep what we have here either. May God bless you, and may this Saturday be a Saturday for each one of us, so that we really, truly begin to walk in the way of our beloved Lord and not make Him suffer because He's suffering. He's suffering for a people who say in word that they love him but in fact they are not loving him god bless you brothers and forgive forgive because i cannot control myself i cannot control myself because what i experience is too sad but may the lord bless you and may we all reach the heavenly homeland be there live together eternally with jesus christ because this is really what it is about brothers the enemy wants he wants to destroy our souls. He does not want that we reach the heavenly homeland because he has already been there and he knows that he will never be there again. And that is why he fights so that we do not arrive. Let us ask the Lord to take away these gargoyles that we have to look only down and that we can look up and meet Christ Jesus with his arms outstretched with his forgiveness, with his love, so that we can be worthy to enter the heavenly homeland with him. May the Lord bless you.